Hello everyone and welcome to another video on integral calculus. Now the main theme of the last few videos has been the Riemann sum, right? The idea of using a bunch of rectangles to approximate the area under a curve where that curve has a rather irregular shape. Right? We saw examples of that in the last videos. And our linchpin for that was this formula here. The area is the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. Right? And of course, you remember that n is the total number of rectangles we use. f of x sub i is the height of each rectangle. And we have, the, uh, we have a convention for choosing that height. We talked about with the left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums. And delta x is the common width we use for each rectangle. Right? And that's how we came up with this formula here. Now, one thing we did stress, however, is that this formula is still an approximation for the area under the curve. You might have seen a little glimpse of this in the practice problem video and some uh, in the lecture video as well, but this is not a perfect representation for area under the curve. It's, a, it's an approximation, it's a very useful approximation, and it gives pretty decent results, honestly speaking, but it's still an approximation, right? So the question we're gonna tackle in this video is how we can take this Riemann sum, this approximation that is the Riemann sum, and turn it into this perfect representation for area under the curve that is the definite integral. So that's going to be our topic of focus for today's video. So this picture was, is taken from one of our earlier videos, and you might remember we were basically trying to approximate this area under the curve using this blue rectangle here. However, as you can see here, as you may recall we discussed, this is not a great approximation, right? Because as you can see here, we have all this excess area over here that we don't really want in our approximation, right? So hence, this just calculating the area of this rectangle would not tell us an accurate value for this um, area under the curve. However, when I added two rectangles, this was a slightly better approximation, right? Because as you can see here, the amount of excess area that we'd be calculating is much less, right? So as a result, this is a slightly better approximation. Still not great, but slightly better. Then we used five rectangles. So as you can see here, now that excess area has gone down even further. It's much smaller now. So this looks like an even better approximation for area of the curve than what we saw with the two rectangles. And last but not least, we can make this 10 rectangles. Right? And in this case, you can kind of see that looks almost exactly like the area under the curve. It looks, it's almost exactly what the area under the curve should be. There's still a few rough edges over here, but besides that, it's almost perfect for our area under the curve, right? And so I hope, I wonder if you're seeing the pattern here, is that is that the more rectangles we seem to have, the better this approximation seems to be. So let's put this uh, all together. So as we just mentioned, the more rectangles we have, the better of an approximation our Riemann sum will be, right? as you can see in these pictures here. So to get an exact value, we could take advantage of that fact. We could say, well, let's have as many rectangles as is humanly possible. Because as you can see here, the more rectangles I put on this width, on this fixed interval here, the better the approximation is going to be. So what if I let my number of rectangles go to infinity? Well, if I did that, then eventually, since we're still sticking these rectangles on this fixed uh, interval here, eventually the number of rectangles would be so high that it would be a perfect representation for area under the curve, right? Or it would be so close to perfection that it's indistinguishable from what the area under the curve would be, the exact area under the curve. So therefore, what we can do to achieve this level of perfection is we can just take the limit as n goes to infinity of our Riemann sum here. So what we're saying is we're stuffing infinitely many rectangles under this curve on that fixed interval. And when we do that, this will give us a perfect approximation or almost a perfect representation, I should say, for area under the curve. So now we can move on to the definition of the definite integral. And this is what it is. So the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx uh, is just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity from i equals 1 to n of this thing here. It's still the Riemann sum formula, except we are now having, we have that limit now as n goes to infinity. And everything still means the same, right? n is the total number of rectangles, delta x is the common width, 
f of x sub i is the height of each rectangle. The last thing I want to say on this is I want to have a few no I have a few notes that I want to go over with you guys. Firstly, is that even though we're now no longer using the Riemann sum, or the, we, we will we're, we've, we're now using this limit here with our Riemann sum, this definite integral here is still an area under the curve. Right? Just because now we have some fancy new notation for it does not mean that this into this thing is no longer an area under the curve. It's still an area under the curve, right? And because of this, we can use this for the same things we've been using it for so far. So if we want to find uh, find displacement, and if f of x is a velocity function, we want to find displacement, we can, this definite integral this definite integral is still going to tell us that. But now it's going to tell us a lot. It's going to give us a much more precise answer than what this Riemann sum would do by itself. The next question you might ask is, what about the mid? What about the left, right, and midpoint Riemann sums, right? Because if you remember, those three things could give us very different answers. But remember what happens when we take the limit as n goes to infinity. When n goes to infinity, this width here, delta x of each rectangle, is going to get infinitely small. So whereas we might have started with rectangles that look like this, eventually our rectangles are going to get super duper thin, right? We're stuffing infinitely like a whole bunch of, because we're stuffing infinitely many rectangles on an interval, eventually they're gonna get super duper thin. And as a result, there is, if you look at this thin rectangle here, there's very little difference between the left, right, and midpoint of that rectangle here. On, on this rectangle, you can quite clearly see where the left Riemann sum would show up, the right Riemann sum, and the midpoint Riemann sum. Over here, those three things are near indistinguishable. Right? So when we take this limit as n goes to infinity, when we make our rectangles infinitely thin, right, the left midpoint and right Riemann sums become identical. In other words, we don't even need to bother with distinguishing them anymore because all three are just going to be the same thing. So when I say the integral from a to b of f of x dx, we don't even really care what Riemann sum that is. In fact, we don't even we don't even use that lingo again moving forward with this definite integral because it doesn't matter, right? Because this, these rectangles are so thin, it just doesn't matter. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time.